It is a regular Seventh day Sabbath. It comes every single week on Friday at sundown to Saturday sundown. It is that one 24 hour period that God desires for us to rest. Um, I wanted to be down on the floor and be close to you today. Um, because as I shared on last night, I want to share some things that I shared last night again on today and then we'll move forward or go deeper or go in the direction that God should have for us to go in. Um, it is important that I talk to you because there are things that God has charged us to do in the Word that I want to make sure I get, um, I relay that to you. Uh, more important, I need to make sure that your blood is not on my hands because some of us are taking the liberty that God has given to us and you are doing things that God does not want us to be doing. So having said that, um, Again, my only reason for sharing this, too, because I love you, and two, as first, two, because I do not want your blood on my hands. I don't want it to be a situation where you've been coming to church, you've been having a good time, and you feel like pastor never told me. I don't want you to ever be in that predicament. Praise God. So it is, today is a Sabbath. It is the Sabbath. It is God's seventh day Sabbath. And what God desires for us to do is he desires for us to rest that one full 24 hour period. Yeah. Amen. 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 And I know it is hard for many of us, but I just want to share this in love. What he really wants, because I know everybody is very important, and I mean that in love, not being sarcastic. Yeah. Everybody has a lot that's going on, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm convinced that God knows far better than we do Absolutely. what we should be doing. Amen. Amen. It is just like that right now, things that I've shared with you before, and I'll keep using it as an illustration with my car. Um, and there are things that go wrong with it that I can only take it to the Lexus dealership for because they are the creators. They are the makers of that vehicle. And they know what they're doing. I need for you to think about that as it relates to your life, that God created you. And so since he created you and he is your maker, he knows exactly what you need. So if he says that my desire is for you not to work yourself seven days a week, he knows what he's talking about. He wants us to shut down. This is so good to be able to get this out. One 24-hour period. This is interesting. Our response is interesting because my assumption was the vast majority of us knew that. Your response to me indicates perhaps not which is why I will continue to share from my heart. God's will, you find my view, I'm just looking at the congregation, reading them as a whole, getting the pause. God's will is for you not to work at all on the Sabbath. And, and, and watch this, watch this. You really should be happy about that. Because this is, this is, this is not a time for, watch this now. God don't want you to work yourself to the point where you are broken down. Your immune system takes a hit. Your body takes a hit. The other parts in your body, it takes a hit. Because watch this. We just won't shut down. Every successful CEO I've ever read a book by, or anybody who's ever just been successful will tell you, you need a period in time for which you take time to shut down. Good, good, right. Even Jesus, who was the master, I don't see her today, Sister Altman's not here, but the master CEO would always take time to go away yes. to pray, yes. to become refreshed, yes. to refuel, yes. to become recharged, if you will. Yes. Now, if Jesus, Sister Shrine, so good to see you and your mom, if Jesus would take the time to shut down, why do you think you shouldn't take the time? And you know what I love about God? He didn't say, if you don't do this, I'm going to kill you. He just says, watch this now, because my daughter is dealing with this right now in college where she's away, and I want to make sure that I and First Lady have pastored or uh, mothered and fathered her to the degree where she doesn't have to stress and worry about things like this. Sister Swan, what God wants us to do is stop Everything that we normally do. Now, the number one thing is, he doesn't, whoever you go to work for, like I work for Blue Cross and Blue Shield, he doesn't want me to do any work for them for that one 24-hour period. Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. Have I got that? That's what, now, watch what he says. He says, we're going to go to the Word in a few moments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, watch this now. What does the Word remember mean? He wants you to recall. He wants you to think about what happened. 
Now watch this now. I need to put this out there. Nothing that you do makes the, the day holy. He's already done that. So that's how all my brothers and sisters think. Well, you got to. No, 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 no. I'm not coming from a religious standpoint. I want you to understand this is a relationship that I have with God. Watch, oh, God, this is good. Watch, and when, when God looks at us, he, he watches. Because I'm tired of us saying this but not walking in this. We truly are the head and not the tail. But anybody who's ever been in charge of any organization or any business will tell you, you cannot continue to function when you're tired and you're run down and you're frustrated and you are sleep deprived. Talk to me, somebody. If you want to be effective at what you do, there are two things that you need. One is exercise, and the other one is that you've got to rest. If I wasn't a good pastor, I'd let you continue to run yourself crazy. But the reason why I don't want to do that is because if you die, I'm going to have to preach your funeral. There are other things I desire to do other than be burying you. I mean, that really is the truth. But I care about you. And I want to see us do what God told us to do. So he says, remember the Sabbath day. Take the time out. Now watch this now, because some of us really get tight when we talk about things like this. Understand this from a balanced perspective. God wants us to come to his house and worship him. After we worship him, there is nothing wrong with you. Watch me. Listen to me, shall I say. You and your family spending quality time together. Because you get out of church at 2.30 doesn't mean you got to go to work. Or you got to log on. Come on. on. I found that I do my best work when I'm rested. I found that I make the best decisions as it relates to life when I'm rested. I found out that I make a lot of mistakes when I'm trying to function off fumes. That's true. That's true. So very simply put. He wants us, don't go to work. Our regular jobs, that's what he wants. Now, having said that, I have to work. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Any minister that's on staff, they need to be ready to work too. Amen. Most cases, they are working. These brothers right here work every day. And then some. And there are others in the congregation as well to have other jobs. It requires that you work. I do believe that there's permission that's granted in Scripture. If you are a fire, uh, fireman, I believe it's God's will yes. that you stay on rotation and you go to work. Yes. If you're a police officer, I believe it's yes. God's will. If you happen to be a mayor yes. or a governor or something yes. like that, there are things you need to do. Yes. Amen. I wouldn't wait for your amens, praise the Lord. There are things you need to do. I'm just going to tell you that. Amen. Here's something else I want to help you out with congregation. Today's a good day for it. Those of us who have mobile phones, turn them off. Amen. Amen. Where, where is your struggle? Is your struggle that you're more important than God? Is your struggle that whoever it is that needs to contact you? And I understand emergency situations, don't get me wrong. But it's not every single week that you have an emergency situation. You're afraid to give your brain some rest. Why is that? Watch this. Now here's how I know the world's not going to fall apart because you've turned your phone off. Number one, you didn't create it. Amen. Amen. The only person who I don't want to ever turn their phone off is God. Because I need him. And you need him. And watch this. And since he never sleeps nor slumbers, how about it's a good idea I get rest? So, so watch this. Watch this. Here's what God wants. And we don't want to get away from this. Lee, there are more ideas, there are more concepts, there's more business that God has for you, but sometimes he can't get it to you if you don't take the time to shut down and rest. Amen. Amen. Why, why do I say that, minister? You know why I say that? Because it's in our quiet times that God a lot of times will speak to us yes. and give us something yes, and we can sir. write it down yes, and implement it, but a lot of times if we're too busy to hear it, right. we don't hear it, we miss it. Amen. What is God's desire for us in Savannah is to turn off our telephones. Turn off our, watch this now, turn off our TVs. Now I understand if you have on BET, or no, towards the TVN, Word, you know, on Word Network and all those uh, Christian base that are going to be feeding your spirit. The Word of God. I get that. But if you don't, you're not watching that, I highly recommend you turn all the other nonsense off. Now watch, notice what my goal is. I said nothing about your salvation. 
Because God wants you to live. I'm talking about how you operate down here. Now, we want to be, let me get back to my original, one of my original points. We want to be the head and not the tail. If you want to be the head, we have to act like the head. Any really, really good, successful leaders also know how to be followers. There is something wrong with leadership, Sister Carr, if all they want to do is give instruction to everybody, but they can never take instruction from anybody. There's something wrong. And I will share that to the entire congregation. If you're that type of person where you always want to tell somebody something, but nobody can tell you anything, there's something wrong. And I base it upon what Jesus told us. There's something wrong. Jesus called us, watch this now, if we want to be great, then we must first learn how to serve. Amen. 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 I can't be willing to ask you for something I'm not willing to do. Amen. Amen. And it could be something as small or as meaningful as walking our sisters across the street from the parking lot, picking up the children, taking out the trash, cleaning the church, whatever it is, God called us to serve. Amen. Amen. I don't have any problem. I was here last Friday night, I think it was, and was waiting for my wife. She was ministering, talking to the women. And I looked up at the ceiling, I saw a light. I said, ah, something's up with that ballast because it hadn't come on. It was just in my mind, I'm timing it. And uh, I was going to go get the ladder and get up on the, 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 the uh, to fix the, ba the balance, if you will. You know why? Because that's in me. That's what leaders do. Yeah. We don't sit around all the time be waiting for somebody. Guess what? I might have hired somebody, but they're not in a position, and I know how to do it. I'm getting that job done. Amen. Amen. So, so, brother Howard, I thoroughly enjoyed him giving the health talk today. Amen. But, but listen. The Lord used him in a mighty way to talk about something so simple. He was yet very powerful with it, but it's so simple. How many of us in here truly, Brother Swan, would wash each other's feet? Amen. That's what Amen. Jesus, now watch this now. Out of all the examples that he could have given to us, he gave us, Sister Geneva, feet washing. It is humbling. Might I, might I add this in here? Some might see it as disgusting. Because you got the dirt that's on somebody's feet. They have traveled all over the place. There are a whole lot of things that you can contract while people are, are, are walking and whatnot. And he says, you really want to be great, then I need for you to learn to serve. And here's the thing. While you're washing the feet, are you careful not to bring attention to whose feet smells and who's done? Amen. Or whose nails have been manicured or clipped and whose yeah. has, has not been? Because you know church folk, we like to point out stuff. Amen. Child, they sang, but you know they're not saved. <laughs> Come on, I mean, you know how we do. Yeah. So he tells us this, watch this now. Remember this after this, shut down. Shut down. Please shut down. Can yeah. I tell you something else? Because somebody offers you overtime, don't mean you got to take it. Yeah. And someone just lose our minds. <laughs> Chill. The answer is no. Now, don't you find it also, too, that it's very convenient. Nothing opens up. I'll give you an example. I'll give you a better example. This happens to me all the time. My company typically will serve us donuts and give us lunch and stuff like that. But like clockwork, they always do it on a Wednesday. <laughs> the only people who will catch that are those who are. <laughs> but I'm like, God, really? I mean, I know several of the vice presidents, directors, I'm like, can I tell you something? Can you do it on a Tuesday or a Thursday? I mean, sometimes I think, and it's not a sin if you can't pass, it's okay. But sometimes I think what God is after is to see, are you willing to give it up sometime for him? Amen. Amen. Not making excuses all the time, but would you be willing to give it up for him? Everybody with me. Yeah, so please understand this, church. At some, at some point in time, we have to have an honest heart-to-heart -heart discussion and conversation about this. We didn't make this up. God gave it to us. He says, and I want you to rest. He loves us so much until, watch this, as Elder Embry shared, he gives us a built-in vacation day. Yeah. Take the vacation day. Amen. May I share this? Because there are times which I even have to stop. If what you are dealing with is um, seems to be more than you can bear, 
that's a good place for you, Elder, to stop and consider, did God ordain this for me? That's right. That's right. And the reason why I say that's that right. is because the Bible says he will not give, put more on us or give us more right. than we can bear. Yes. If what we're dealing with is driving us crazy, yes. I submit yes. to you that perhaps you should yes. give some thought to the fact yes. that maybe God yes. did not ordain that yes. for your life. Yes. Well, what are people going to think about me? Who cares? On, what are people going to say about me? Who cares? Amen. Thought about something today. Both of my children hit me up. Bailey says, Dad, what's it take to get an appointment with you after service? I said, what do you mean? She said, because I need to talk to you. I said, you live with me. You're my daughter. I mean, you know, just talk to me. She was like, Dad, I want to make an appointment. And I thought about that. I said, okay. I said, well, I got somebody I got to go see. But when I come back, we sit in the office and we talk. My son, you know, we get out, we pull up, we get ready to come into the church. And he says, Dad, I got a question for you. I said, okay, what's up? Shoot, go for it. You know, he asked me his Bible question. And I was like, where's this coming from today? <laughs> now, my wife can tell you that the people I usually typically have all the patience in the world for is the membership. But when it comes to my kids, I figure they're okay because they're my kids. And the Holy Spirit was like, stop. And I said, okay, God. Because he let me know, that's my first ministry. Amen. This is going to be strong to some of you, but I pray that you understand, you know, I know enough word to back this up. If you're not getting it, they ought to be getting it. Let, 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 me talk, let me talk to you. You might not clap after this. That's my first priority, to make sure my children and my wife are taken care of. Amen. I don't say I don't love you. I do love you. But watch this. I should not love you more than the Heavenly Father loves you. You are His church. He's going to make sure you don't go without. But my God, I feel like teaching today. My responsibility is to make sure I take care of the Smith household. Because of God. Calm down. I guess he's going to take the word back to the other brothers. Like Smith can preach. Watch this now. God, there's some good stuff right here. My responsibility is to take care of. I'm sorry. Media ministry. My responsibility is to take care of the Smith household. Now watch this. If in fact a man cannot take care of his own household, how, this is not what the writer said, I'm adding this in here, how in the name of God is he going to take care of the house of the Lord? So if I'm that busy, where I don't have time for my children, something's wrong. Amen. So I said, oh, stop what you're doing. Go take care of your household first. Yeah. Then you can come back and take care. Amen. Amen. So no matter what I think I got going on, what I got on my schedule, dear times, but I got to stop. I said, oh, let me clear this. I, I, I got to meet with my child. But, but listen, this is, this is a big deal. That deal can wait. That's right. I got to take care of my child. Amen. Come on, talk to me so I can see that money going to be spent. There are things going on in their lives that I can never get back. thing with first lady she doesn't put up a fuss she's just happy to be with me <laughs> and I'm, i didn't say that like i'm the grand gift she is she's just happy to be with me first lady could really care about she does i love that about her can you imagine how difficult it would be to pastor this church if she was high on attention and maintenance because some of y'all <laughs> I thank God that she is fully aware of who she is. Yeah. I say that, Minister, because I have sisters who think, man, what would it be like to be the first lady? You don't want to know. And if you had what it took, you would be the first lady. No, that's real talk. It's real talk. Because people look and they want stuff. You don't have no idea what it takes to walk in first lady's shoes. None whatsoever. And let me tell you something. You don't want to know. Why don't you, why don't you take the glory? Why don't you take all the anointing? Take all the honor and walk in what he bestowed upon you. Some good talking right here. We haven't even opened up the Bible yet. 
Yeah. I, I, I'm sharing this with you because that's what any good pastor would do. Yeah. If they love their congregation. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be so busy until we can't fulfill the word of God. Yeah. He told us to shut down. And so my sister, I want to shut down and make sure that I'm resting. Yeah. I, I figured out after 48 years living on this planet, on this earth, that usually uh, my body goes through some changes, Elder, when I run it to a certain... Yes, huh? I keep going and going and going. Your body says, oh, you can go ahead and go to what you said. Yeah. And so what the Lord is telling me, Michael, pay attention. Take some time and just say yes. Right. And you know what I learned? No is not a bad word. I'm not able to. It's not a bad word. I don't have it. That's not a bad thing. I don't care what everybody else is going to be encouraged. I, God told me to rest. I like when he talks to me and tells me to rest. <laughs> Could have said something else. Said, no, I need you to write. Hey, Everybody got that? Yeah. Let's go to Leviticus. We're going to have some more fun talking. Let's go to Leviticus. 23rd chapter. To our, all of our visitors, we're glad to have you. If you need to step oh, yeah. out and leave, I certainly, yeah. certainly understand. I want to talk about what today is and why I'm talking about fasting and whatnot. It's an important day. So if we don't know anything else at all, we started off with the Sabbath. Amen. Because God wants us to rest. We happen to be a Sabbath key day Amen. in the church. Amen. And I believe what that means that we believe Friday night sundown to Saturday sundown is that one 24-hour period that God wants us to rest. Amen. 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 So what we do is we, even on Friday nights, even though we don't have service every single Friday night, what we have is various ministries, uh, men's ministry, youth ministry, women's ministry, leadership and whatnot. Um, but that's still time for us to shut down. Now, when God gave me the vision for our church, what he did was he gave me that to help you understand that there are times when she just wants you to rest. You worked, you had a challenging week. Go home, get in the bed, and rest. Amen, amen. If it happens to be, and I'm, I'm doing this for a reason, congregation. Trust me, after 18 years of passing, y'all, there's certain things I just need to do. Um, we have new members that are here. And they don't always know why we do what we do. Amen, amen. I have tried, for those of you who are helpful and, and help, you know, you, you wish you pastor well, I have tried the membership class. Happen to pastor a kind of congregation that um, if it's not being done on Saturday, we have some challenges. So what I have to do is take my time and help us when it's appropriate to help us. So we are a Sabbath day, 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 day church or Sabbath keeping church. It means we go to church on Saturday, common call, commonly called Sabbath day. Everybody got that? Amen. How long does the Sabbath last? It is a one 24-hour period. So when the sun goes down on Friday to when the sun goes down on Saturday, it's that one 24-hour period where God wants you to rest. Everybody got that? Amen. I do not believe that God is against you going to the beach, going down to the harbor, Amen. walking around. Amen. Um, I even have places around my neighborhood where I exercise where you can just rest your mind. You stop. Amen. Watch this now. You're ceasing from that labor. And when I say that labor, we're talking about that which you get paid to do. Everybody with me? What I do not believe God wants is for you to be on your way to church, you get a flat tire, and you just sit on the side of the road all day talking about it was a Sabbath. No. What he wants you to do is get out your car, get that jack if you got it, change your tire, put it back on, and come on to church. All right? Because sometimes people struggle with stuff like that. Amen. If you are like my baby girl, she's at college and not everybody around her does exactly what we do and whatnot, it is perfectly fine for her to be in her room, have her devotions, log on, be in services with us or any other church, or if there's another Christian organization that's having services on Saturday, I believe it's God well within her right and God's will for her to go and worship. When that time period is over, I don't believe God expects me to just lay in the bed and look up at the ceiling until the sun goes down. First lady will tell you because I don't hide anything in reference to my life. I'm on vacation. I have myself a good time. I'm walking around. I have myself a good time. I've been places where people who feel like this van, we can't move. Don't turn the light on. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Sabbath, don't take the elevator. The kid is going from the first floor to the 12th floor by pressing the button. Yes. So, so watch this now. No, watch what Jesus says. This is good. I don't, I don't know why God is leading me here. And, 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 and then again, I have an idea. Watch what Jesus says now. I need to give you some scripture because you think I'm making this stuff up. Watch this. And I paraphrase in a sense. A man's life is more important than the day. Come on, Bishop. 
And something else he said that blesses me. He says, I am Lord of the Sabbath. But they can't do no more than what he tells it to do. He controls that. To me, you must understand, it's a gift to us to chill. You know what's really funny about this? Some of us are lazy. But God still got to tell you to chill. See, you don't, you don't work no other time, but you want to work on Saturday because you're lazy <laughs> and disobedient. Think about that. I was going to come past. I knew trash needs to be taken out, but I thought Deacon uh, ministers also. They're 50 feet from the trash, and you 10. It shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. Leviticus 23. Remember that Sabbath day. We're going to keep it home. So that means that we're supposed to be coming to worship God. Amen? Amen. And then we get out of service. It's a good time. Go home. Go sit on your deck. Yes. Drink some tea. Amen. Whatever you drink, and praise God. Hopefully it's kosher. Praise God. But, uh, <laughs> relax. <laughs> Jesus. Anybody with me? So today, let's get into today. We know that uh, what's mapped out in the Word of God, Jeff, in the 23rd chapter is the Feast of the Lord. Is everybody, is everybody aware of that? Amen. They're not feasts of the Jews. They're feasts of the Lord. Amen. They belong to God. Everybody got that? Yes, sir. I want to keep it very simply put. And please, when our new members come, don't encourage them to do the wrong thing. Encourage them to do the right thing. Amen. Now, what I mean by that is not so much say something to them as much lead by example. Yes, Amen. Right, right, right. Amen. Amen. People want to be a part of something that's big and that's growing and that's flourishing. Amen. But if they see you giving up, Come on, or if they hear you running down on, or talking about, then nobody wants to be a part of it. Are you with me? Amen. Last time I checked, Jesus Christ has come that we might have. Right. And that we might have it what? Right. Okay, everybody got that? There are times. Now watch, here's the other thing. Sister Diana, I'm going to use you as an example. When you ask us to bring food for us to eat, you know, when we are eating, and I commit myself to bringing chicken, God does not want me to wait until Saturday morning. <laughs> To go get the chicken. But it needs to be hot pat. Hold on. He wants us to prepare. Amen. He wants us to prepare beforehand. Thank God we don't live under this, but in the Old Testament, people literally lost their lives for going out and doing dumb stuff. So watch that. That's how much minister he wants us to rest. He's saying make preparation Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Get up to Friday. But guess what? Don't be rushing into it if you can control it. You want to get to the point where it's like, this is a vacation day that God gave to me. I'm going to take it. Amen. Now, there is provision made if you need gas or if you just didn't get a chance to do it, slip your mind and you do certain things. I believe that that's okay. Amen. But for the most part, God wants us to make it a habit to try to take care of everything before the sun goes down so that we can enjoy. Now watch this now. So we can enjoy the day. Yeah. Amen. You know what kind of stress it brings upon you when you're always running. It's always last minute. You just throw it together and then comes an attitude and then comes a fight. And then, Nobody got time for all that. Chill. Are you getting it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what God wants. So watch this. Let me start with verse 1. I wasn't going to do this, but I, I'm going to take my time and enjoy the Lord. And you, you know you want me to talk because it shortens the amount of time. <laughs> Elder, thank you for your help today. Let them know I am fasting. Amen, amen. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, beginning at verse 1. Then the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be what? Holy convocations. He says, even these are whose feasts? They're God's feasts. He says, now watch this. I just got finished talking about this. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all of your dwellings. So here's the thing. The Lord knew wherever I was going to be that he would put within me the ability to be able to rest. Yes. And to keep the Sabbath. Are you with me? Amen. He says that in all of your dwellings. And we're not making it some religious thing. This is a relationship thing. Yes. God is talking to Moses, to the children of Israel. And the reason why we start here, praise God, is because God has never preached a different sermon any ever, ever when he walked the planet. Amen. Amen. I need for everybody to understand that. So when Jesus would go to church, Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, yes. as was his custom. Amen. But he did that because, guess what? All you see from, oh, this is good. I guess I'm a teacher mode. From Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, that's the, the law. That's God's word, truly. Yes. Right. What you see outside of that is people Before attempting you. to live yes. by way of applying God's word that's to true. their lives. That's 
Everybody got that. Amen. So even when people jump up and say, oh, yeah, in the New Testament, understand there's a period of at least 400 years between Malachi, which is the last book, versus getting over to Matthew. So the question becomes then, what, pray tell, were they doing in that 400-year period? They're keeping the Old Testament. And then when we get the New Testament and you look at what the disciples are talking about, what are they talking about? They're living the Old Testament. They have to have been because the New Testament wasn't written yet. So if you read it with that proper lens on, you understand that God didn't come to change anything. Amen. If anything, what he came to show us how to do Rocky was how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so some of us did struggle with stuff like that. Oh my God, you know, they, these men are hungry and they go in and they, you know, they, they eat some bread that was dedicated to the Lord. And the Lord says, guys, don't kill them. They were hungry. That's right. That's right. And one like Jesus flipped on them because he told them, he says, Guess what? I need you to understand that a man's life is more important than the day. Amen. So like a day like even today, we got a double Sabbath. If you take medication and we're fasting today as a church, take your medication. Amen. If you need to eat something before you take it, eat it. Amen. I told the church two things last night and I want to say it again today. If in fact you sit up in here and you're diabetic or you have some type of medical issue that requires that you eat and take your medication and you don't do it, we're going to do two things. We are going to call the emergency or the rescue squad. That's number one. Number two, when they get here and they check you out and stuff like that, I'm also going to ask them to do a psychological evaluation on you. I would be right there saying that senior pastors of this church, that's not what we teach. That's not how we interpret the word of God. I don't know what he or she was doing, but that's not what we teach. Amen. Amen. As it's already been said, what I want you to know is Jesus Christ has already taken care of your sins. Amen. When you yes. see atonement, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. when you see atonement in, in Romans chapter 5 and around by verse 8, I want you to understand another way to interpret that is reconciliation. Yeah. So your reconnection with the Lord, you've already received that through Jesus Christ. It's nothing that you can do. Jesus has already done that. Yeah. Fasting, oh, this is good. So if you look at Day of Atonement, as we will get to that, there are three ways, three things, three components, so to speak, we see there. One is we need a high priest. Yes. Yes. That's Leviticus chapter 16. Two is in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, and I'll read that by God's grace in a few moments. I want you to see very clearly God is saying, I need for you to afflict your soul. That's the part you play. Amen. Then I think around about, about Numbers 27 or either 29 or so, God told us what we needed to do as it relates to the offerings. But the good news is Jesus Christ has already taken care of the offering piece. Thank the only thing we do to, watch this down, please listen. The only thing we are left to do to remember what Jesus did is to afflict our souls for that one 24-hour period. And he uses the word afflict. I think he's even being nice and loving when it comes to that. Because it's really easy. Amen. When you think about the fact that this man came and took on the sins of the world, that's, that's hard to fathom. Amen. Truly hard to fathom. And there's a love in God we talked about last night. Boy, I, I'm still striving for it. Because I love each and every one of you dearly. Out there times I'm not resting because I'm thinking about you and I'm praying for you and whatnot. But let me tell you something. My love for you has not gotten, gotten to this place where I'm about to show you the word of God. Don't laugh. I'm just going to tell you up front. My love for you hasn't gotten here, but I think God wants me to eventually get here. Y'all ready? Amen. Are y'all ready? Amen. This is some real stuff here. The reason why I'm stressing this, and I really want to just get to atonement, but I got to flow the way the Holy Spirit is leading, is because this is an important day. Yes. You know what's so important about today? Is decisions are being made up in heaven today about your life. Amen. Elder Embry talked about it. And we're not making this up for everything I share with you. I, you know, I know, know the word. I give you more word than what I know more word than what I got time. But I want to show you the scriptures to help you understand that God is making a decision about your life. He talked about this. He said, you know, his father-in-law, the script had already been written. God knew when he was going to pass away. Yeah. But he also shared how he was sick. And it could have been written another way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's some people who even debate. I was walking, matter of fact, at work, and some friends were saying, Mike, uh, you know, do you believe that one saved always saved? And I said, absolutely not. Come on, Bishop. Right. Right. Come on, Bishop. Absolutely. Do you know what kind of havoc we would wreak up in the church? Yeah. If once you gave your life to the Lord, yeah. that sealed it, I would be, come, is there anybody else with me to be acting like a plum fool up in here? Amen. I was like, no, not at all. Not at all. I said, tell you what, I told him, I said, your husband, I said, see if, see if your husband let me sleep with you tonight since we once saved, always saved. 
He said, no, you can do things to step outside of the will of God and you get messed up. She's like, she said, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, Don't you listen to nobody telling you no nonsense like that. You might be reading the word. Amen. One saved, always saved. How could you fall from grace? Wow. Y'all ready? Amen. So we talked about the Sabbath a little bit. I want to get back to Leviticus, but I want to share this too because this is so important. And, and, and it needs to be shared because we, we often say Jesus did it all without fully understanding what he actually did. Amen. Because if we say, it was another conversation at work, we say the law was done away with, what law are we talking about? Because I'm going to tell you something. You know, some of y'all got some nice cars out there look better than mine. And since the law was done away with, I'm going to bust you side your head and take your car. But y'all know if I get caught, I'm going to jail, right? Yes, sir. And why am I going to jail? Because that law wasn't done away with. So if you're smart, you'd be saying, before we do that, what law are we talking about? Amen. Think about that. Think about when people say the law was nailed to the cross. Even if we just started with the commandments. Can you imagine a world where lying doesn't exist? Now watch this. If sin is the transgression of the law, and we're using the Bible to define it, if sin is the transgression of the law, just imagine if we say sin was nailed to the law. Right? I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the law was nailed to the cross, right? So there is no sin. How many of y'all know you'd be living a different life? I'm not asking what you would do, but how many know you'd be living a different life? Sin is the transgression of the law. God's law. God's word. What did God say? Because if you don't, have no, you don't have no sin, you don't need no Savior. You don't need no church. Amen. You don't need no preacher. That's true. Right. That's right. Watch this. You don't even need grace. Come on, Bishop. You don't need anything. Good. It's, not it's not okay for us to lie. Amen. It's not okay for us to steal. Amen. It's not okay for us to have each other's spout wife uh, right. what is it, spouse swapping and all that nonsense. Amen. That's that's not what God wants. Oh, come on, we got about three amens on that. Come on, bitches. It's a lot going on in the world of that. I just got checked. There's no pause check. Amen. Y'all be surprised some of the stuff I find out right now. Like, Lord My Jesus. God. God. What? Okay. So so watch this. Because I'm not I'm not there yet. Y'all pr y'all praying for me? Yeah. All right, let's have some fun in the word of God. Y'all ready to walk? Yeah. Let's go to Exodus. We talked about some of this last night. Exodus chapter 32. Talk about some of the same stuff. I think it's good. Exodus 32, you right? You ready? Amen. I wanted to holler up a little bit, but I was watching how y'all was responding to Elder Emory, and I was like, no, they tired. <laughs> or hungry or something. They said, well, give me God that $2 praise. I was like, they ain't wearing me out today. I'm like, then <laughs> they're trying to pump me. I'm like, go ahead, bitch, you good. Mm -hmm. Not today. Mm -hmm. And then we have a solid assembly together. <laughs> y'all know I love you, right? Yeah. Exodus 32. You ready? Amen. This is a pastor parishioner relationship we're talking about. What did I say? It's a pastor relationship. Anybody got that? Amen. All right, so let's look at the word of God. Let's see what happened. Verse 30, and it came to pass on the law that Moses said unto the people, ye have sinned the great sin, and now I will go up to the, uh, unto the Lord. Peradventure I shall make an atonement for your sin. So watch this. The people sin. Moses says the pastor says, okay, something's got to be done. Amen. By the way, atonement simply means, if you look at it in Hebrew from Yom Kippur, it just simply means a covering. All right? Simply put. Okay. So watch this now. They mess up. Moses says, we need to atone. Because we need, I, I, in other words, I need to cover your sin. Anybody with me? Amen. So, so even, oh, this is good. Even when Adam and Eve messed up, immediately, without, without any Bible, everybody seems to have known there was some type of atoning that needed to take place. Yeah, right. Even Adam and Eve, because they go and they attempt to cover themselves, because they recognize since they messed up, yeah. we need to cover up. Yeah. That's good. Amen. Anybody with me? Yes, sir. So Moses kind of understands from them, if you jack up something, you got to cover it. Amen. Amen. Mama T, I'm trying to help people who sometimes do stuff, and then they don't want to say, I'm sorry. Amen. 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 Now, there's a difference between covering it up and covering it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Covering it up would be, well, I said something I shouldn't have said out of the way. I called some sister uh, Raquel Carr out of her name. I'm just going to get her a set of roses. No. 
<laughs> when he's having verses, Sister Carl, would you please forgive me? I said such and such to you. I know what I said, and I don't care if you saying it didn't bother. I, I believe I offended you. That's right. Please forgive That's me. Right. That's right. Then you can give her the roses. Yes. Amen. Everybody catch that? Yes. Don't you hate working with people who you know they you they know they did you wrong, and you know they did you wrong, and they don't want to say I'm sorry. Yes. I, I appreciate it. Though. I'm sorry. Everybody with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Moses says, watch this. I know y'all messed up. Guess what? There's an atonement that's got to be done. Verse 31. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Now let's stop there. They messed up, says Swan. Yeah. Watch this now. Let me help you out, Ian. Whenever you put something in front of God yeah. or Karen, there's something that, that, that's in your life that's more important than God, you've messed up. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. That's true, man. Everybody got that? Is that something up for you? Whenever, listen, listen, for people who always run around, and I can't make excuses for you. I love you, but as your pastor, I can't make excuses for you. Yes. If God ordained us to do something, we should be doing it. Amen. 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 Yes. That's, isn't it convenient for people to be saying all the time, minister, well, God knows my heart? No. Yes, he knows it. Come on, y'all. Come on, why y'all not giving me no help today? Amen. That's not an excuse. Well, God knows my heart. Yep, I do too. <laughs> That's it. Matter of fact, I thought the words are desperately wicked. Amen. Watch this now. So guess what? He says, y'all done messed up. In other words, what they did was they made a golden calf, and they started to worship the golden calf. Because watch this. Now think about this. Isn't something how we want to look at all of the beautiful things that God has given to us? It's, it's within our nature to look outside of what God gave to us and lust after what somebody else has. Now, you don't stop to think, are they happy? Is it artificial? I mean, there's a whole lot of questions. You just want that because it looked like they're having a good time. Verse 31, Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned, a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. My God. My God. I don't, now y'all know why I said I'm not there yet, right? Yes, I love me some new devil. <laughs> but the kid ain't taking a hit for none of y'all. I'll I pray for you. I fast for you. But I'm not gonna pray that God take my name out the book of life so that they can live. Amen. I'm gonna tell you right now, you talk about y'all you want to look like that's not happening. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, when people start talking stupid, all they do, they start saying, you know, I think I'm a great pastor, I think I'm just like Mo no, you're not like Moses. <laughs> Until you start praying prayers like that, no, you know. Now watch this. As I shared with the church last night, and some of us were not here, but my father actually prayed a prayer on that order. Never forget this. One of our family members, his niece was extremely sick. He prayed and asked God to shave off, take time off of his life, and give it to her. Oh wow! He lived to be seventy-five. He may have lived to have been longer, but I do remember him praying that prayer. And we talked about it quite often. He never regretted it, never took it back. But that's just how bad he wanted her to be able to live and enjoy and have some quality of life. He said, God, please, would you heal her? And God did just that. She's still living today. That's, it. Now, that's some love. Now, if he did that for his niece, I just wonder what he'd do for his kids. Unfortunately, he can't prove it. So my, my reason for sharing this with you today is... Assuming, and I know I'm wrong in some cases, assuming you have an idea as to the festivals of the Lord, he gave us the Sabbath day. He was, well, watch this now. He died during one, which was Passover. He rose during one. So I said, let me let me back up. He was buried during one, which would be uh, unleavened bread. He rose during one, which would be first fruits. He, is, he gave us his Holy Spirit on one, which is the day of Pentecost. I believe he's coming back. He's going to announce he's coming back on one, which would be trumpets. He's going to judge us on one, which is today, the Day of Atonement. And then he's going to come back to gather all of his people, which would be the Feast of Tabernacles. So in that, we see the plan of God's salvation for mankind. Everybody with me? It's because of that. mean this with every ounce of love that I have in me. Throughout history, God gave us the word of God. Throughout history, things have gotten complicated, and because some man had an agenda, they sought to change the word of God. Everybody with me? But you see the plan of God's salvation right here in the word of God. I can go other places, 
but you see right here in the Word of God, the spring festivals, might I add, have already been fulfilled. <coughs> when I say have already been fulfilled, God has done something already concerning those. And I'm talking about Passover. I'm talking about unleavened bread. I'm talking about first fruits. And I'm talking about Pentecost. Amen. Everybody with me? As it relates to trumpets, things have happened, but there's yet more that's going to take place. Amen. Amen. If you read Revelation chapter 8, 9, 10, and 11, you see there's a series of seven trumpets that will be blown, and there are things that are going to take place. Amen. If you have heard me teach on this before, you also understand that the same, some, of the, some of the same plagues that you saw in the Old Testament, you see those plagues in the book of Revelations. So that's letting me know that what we see in the Old Testament, oh my God, is in the New Testament a lot of times explained. Yes. So it's contained in the Old Testament, but explained in the New Testament. Everybody got that? God knows what he's doing. So what's happening today, Pastor Smith? What's the relevance of us fasting today? Number one, God told us to fast. Yes. He says, I want you to afflict your souls. Why? Because on this day, there's some very important decisions that are being made in heaven. Amen. Amen. And I want you to be sensitive about that. You know what? Many of us are reserved in our spirits because it's a good thing. We are connecting with our Heavenly Father. Yes. And when the closer you come with God or to God, the more you figure out how, a lot of times how unlike Him you are. Yes, sir. And it humbles you. Amen. Don't make me get more scripture. Okay. Yes. Isaiah tells us this is why we fast. Now, unlike other religions, God has only given us really one, one day one to day. fast. Thank you, Lord. That's a good place. You, you don't have to. Yeah. That's just a good place to run, to throw a shoe, yeah. to get excited. Yeah. I, you know, listen, I respect greatly my Muslim brothers and sisters, but I couldn't do Ramadan. That's just me. He said, one day, one 24-hour period, all you got to do is just turn your plate down. Amen. And here's the funny thing. We do that out of obedience because in terms of the real job that needed to have been done, he did it. Amen. Amen. Now, here's another reason why we still keep this. Understand that what you see God give in the Old Testament is a replica of what's happening in heaven. Yes. That's Amen. why when he started mapping things out and talking to Moses, he says, make sure you follow everything don't to code. Amen. I don't want you, Moses, in there talking about what you see. You only do what I showed you. Amen. See, because when you're building for the Lord, you got to build according to code. Yes. And Moses built everything. Watch this. That it is a replica of what we see or what we have in the heavens. Amen. Now get this. Okay. It's still happening down here on earth. But the only difference is Jesus Christ is the true high priest. Yeah. And he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. Listen to this. He's not done. Nope. Because the Bible says he ever lived to make intercession for us. Amen. So a good way for you to understand that is if you still sin and he's still interceding. If you still messing up, he's still covering. If you still make mistakes, he is still covering you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So for everybody who feels like, well, you don't have to do that. Well, are you still sinning? Yes. Shut up. <laughs> still making a mistake? Yes. Be encouraged. We need him. We need God. You with me? So we see here in Exodus chapter 32. Minister, is that the arrow? No. Oh, take it. Put it like on 71. It's not. We're going to be roast with fire. Jesus. Uh, all the Old Testament scriptures started coming back. Coming back. All right. So, so we see here in Exodus 32 that. He said you fold the event. Praise God. This is all right. One of the things about your pastor, your father, is that I pay attention like that. Wrap yourself in this. Is this is holy? When you do it, you might fall out of your presence. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Exodus 32. I took you there because I want you to see that this is not foreign. Sometimes we say things in church and we don't back it up in the Word of God. And that is that there is a book of life. Amen. Everybody with me? Yes. Amen. God is paying attention to everything you do. Amen. So if I'm, if I'm happy, he's paying attention to that. Amen. If I'm sad, he's paying attention to that, Megan. If I'm nasty, Minister Shane, he paying attention to that. Yes. All right, I'm going to throw this one out there. Let me look at the clock. Or somebody say, he's talking about me. <laughs> I know that there are people in the church who have two sides. Yes. You got one side that you show all of the members. Amen. And you got one side you show pastor and first lady. Amen. I just want you to know that God sees you. Yes. Amen. Now, we're going to have some fun with this, Abel, when I get to that scripture. But just before I get there. Can y'all see Lee when that happens? I pray that when I stand before the Lord, minister, that it's just me and him. 
Amen. I don't want them to be Amen. talking to me about me in front of Savannah, Michigan, Alexis, Dana, Mom, together. There's certain things, Nikki, I don't want people to know about business. Amen. 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 So this is the book of life. They're like, Mama, do you remember on June 5th you had love? Jesus! 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 <laughs> Some of you ain't going to have to read. You remember? You know what you did. You know what's on your mind. You know it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Can you imagine you standing there and all of a sudden, ah, just a holiday. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, there is a book. Moses mentions it to us. He says, Lord, take my name out of the book because he wanted them to be spared. That's a lot of love. Amen. That's a lot of love. That's a lot of love. Everybody got that? Now, also, I shared this last night, and we'll get back into some other things. Anybody enjoying the word so far? Amen. Amen. We're just taking our time and enjoying the word. Don't y'all like how I take my time and explain it? Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Amen. Mama T, thank you. Sister Nikki, thank you. Amen. All right, y'all doing better. Some of y'all catch me. <laughs> see the others, y'all ain't clapping. I see you. They don't ask me to cover your meal tonight either. Okay, all right, so watch. Mike, I understand if you gotta go, I understand because I go a little bit maybe to like two o'clock. So if you gotta roll out, I got you. Ah, y'all ready for another one? Amen. So we see very clearly, if, if someone wants to, to say to you, I don't think there's a book of life. How do you know? Let's start with the old testament. I just showed you in uh, Genesis uh, Exodus chapter 32. Everybody got that? Amen. Here's another place for us to look. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 10. And I'll tell you a few more things. Luke chapter 10. Everybody good? Amen. <laughs> Luke chapter 10. Brother Jeff, I want to thank you publicly for your service to New Bethel House. Amen. Amen. your service to this ministry. <clears throat> Minister Johnny Carr. Man, I pointed out a few of them. I don't want anybody to get upset with me and feel like I don't appreciate and value all of you. I do. I did that to make a point. Everybody with me? Amen. I did that to make a point. Now, here's why I want to, why I did that. There are a lot of times that I plow, and I have the type of ministry where God can use me either way. Either it can be silent, which when I first started preaching, he always did me like that. And I worried because I thought I wasn't effective until the Holy Spirit shared with me, oh, no, you're very effective. Silence means the people are listening to you. Amen. Because I used to feel like I always had to rear back and holler and all that kind of stuff. And you know what? All you gotta do is just interview people after church. Yeah. They'd be like, man, you preach. What did I preach about? Child, we had a good time. I can't remember, but we yeah, there's something there. There's something. Okay. Watch this now. The Lord has used these men to play a lot of times either while I'm preaching, after I preach, or before I preach. As a result of their gift, and I'm using Minister Carr as an example, sometimes he's singing when Elder Johnson and Sister Danny can't be here. He is doing praise and worship by yes, himself. Yes. Amen. Now, now what I'm, I'm mentioning them because last night the Lord did something very unique uh, with them. There are times for which, and you, if you watch me, it doesn't happen all the time. He will minister, and I'm sensitive like this. There's times for which Elder Embry does it a lot. I can step right into it. Can't sing, but anointed to sing for that service. Amen. 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 Somebody didn't catch that. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm here, but if they do their job right, and the praise team do their job right, I can step right in and keep right on flowing. Amen. 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 
can just continue to take us higher. What happens to many of us is when that happens, you get so used to that happening, you just kind of be like, oh, yeah, yeah. That's the time to jump in the water or get involved because God's moving. Yeah. You with me? Okay? Now, watch this. Now, while we thank God for their gifts and they are extremely effective at what they do, mm -hmm. God doesn't want us to rejoice. Now, watch this. Well, let me say this, too. There's spiritual warfare taking place. Yes, sir. I have seen, as a result of these gentlemen playing under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I've seen people delivered or get breakthrough in service. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Look at you. We don't, we don't stop to think about what it takes in order for that to happen. Dennis Williams, that's why a lot of times, like I told you, I always want you to pray before I preach. I didn't call him today. I gave you a break. But you didn't have your flats on. But, but I gave you a break. <laughs> God uses her mightily. Are you with me? Watch this. Watch this. While we are blessed by that, God looks at that, but what he's really blessed by is this. He says, don't rejoice that I have given you super, I'm paraphrasing, I'm reading it in a moment. I've given you supernatural power over the enemy. He says, rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. Amen. 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 Now watch this. As far as God's concerned, Elder, he expects for us to operate like that. Because yeah, right. he knows, Mama Gail, what kind of power he put within us. Yeah. See, whether you know it or not, every morning that all of y'all get up, the devil knows we cannot be stopped. Yeah. Right. I, I don't think I don't think Hallelujah. we pay attention to what the Minister Carter will use in the day. Good, good, I'm going to help us see yeah. we are effective together. Yeah. 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 I don't think we call it. See, he didn't call me to do this by myself. We're effective to Notice what has to happen. If they start praying and they write, he comes, he's ministering or the praising, whatever, and they write, we, we're effective together. There is a level that we can get to where I don't have to ever preach if we would just go together. You know what keeps us from doing that? We keep considering ourselves. I don't feel well. Somebody, yeah, I got a bigger piece of chicken than me. Uh, we just look for stuff to be upset about. And, I'm and it takes, it keeps us from being one cohesive unit. I remember I shared this with Glory God, Mommy Bell, when Mommy sharing this. It's been some time, praise God. I'm not going to miss it. Maybe Mommy Gail, every now and then. Every now and then, we might bump heads on something. One time we was outside, and I told her, I said, You was a man. <laughs> Come on, don't judge me. I just, I'm telling the truth. She got bust right in the chest. Well, yo, she ain't buckled. She was like, I, I think I can take you. So I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true story, Mom G? <laughs> she might not even remember. I don't know. I said, man, this guy will wrap up like a pretzel. <laughs> I share that with you because you know what I had to do? And this is what I want some of you to learn how to do. Sometimes you have to give people a free pass. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. No sooner than we had that exchange, I said, that's my girl. She crazy. <laughs> we were right over the church, had a hallelujah good time. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. What happens is we think about what exchange took place, Nikki, and we allowed it to separate us. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. We hold on to it. Now, now, I had another reason why I need to hurry up and let that go. Sometimes we go, at one point in time, she's the only person who knows how to fix the bathroom. Yeah. The toilet. Come on, come on, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm holding out on her. I ain't going to tell her for forgiveness, and the toilet don't flush. We only got one bathroom, 25 cents. That's the problem. Yeah. 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 See, Mama, see, we don't want to tell her, I need her. Yeah. 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 Guys, I come to me and say, the Lord told me to humble myself. Can you make me a cake? And it really don't cost you all that much. Amen. 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 If they won't hold on to a big curse, but I'm saying, I'm happy. Now that's the time I expect you to make it be on the floor, tan it up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd have got it off of me. Because you know what it does to the person who refuses to, to forgive you? They be yeah. hot. You know, this is the person right here, the Holy Spirit be just like this, just backing up like, yeah. you better yeah. forgive them. Yeah, that's right. 
Before you know it, they like full-fledged demon mode. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My mama talks about this. Get, get your stuff right between each other. Because otherwise, one of y'all going to jail. And what he's talking about is you're going into that spiritual prison where you can't get out. You can't get to a place in terms of unforgiveness where you can't get out. You really need God to help you out because it'll keep you deep in there. Boy, this brother's teaching the day. You know what's funny? I left all of my notes and everything at home. I mean, at the church last night. So I get a chance to really study deep. And this is why I know God is using me to go this direction because the church needs to hear it. Amen. And like Elder Embry was talking about his father, one of the things I used to play around and do when I was in church before I got good and saved is I would come for coupons. And David told me, because they had pictures of like hamburgers and stuff that I knew people would struggle with. And just when it got around by like 3, 4, 5 o'clock, I'd just pass them out. And my friends would be cutting up and I'd keep a straight face and my pastor would be looking like, get over here. Never got caught. They can tell you the story to this day, but they, she'd make them come up and they'd stand in the rush because they got in trouble for laughing and stuff like that. <laughs> Never knowing that God would use me one day not to pass out coupons, but to preach his word. Amen. Amen. So watch this now. Now let me show you why I took it here. Luke chapter 10, y'all good? Amen. Verse 20. Mm, 17. And the 17 returned again with joy, now, I don't want you to get locked on the number because I believe with all my heart that anybody who gave their life to the Lord Jesus Christ, God then empowers you. Amen. 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 If you ever have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, God has empowered you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Everybody got that? Yeah. Amen. All right, so watch this. We have a number here, but I don't want you to get locked on that. There's 70 returned again with joy, and I could start at the beginning of the chapter, but I won't do that. And the Bible says, um, they, they return saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. You know what's interesting about this? I can tell just from their statement that God gave them the power evangelists, but they didn't really know what he gave to them. Some were still surprised and still shocked with it. And some of us are like that. God's given you power, but unless you use it, you don't really realize how much power you have. Now, you see me because I have to constantly work mine. I want you to get to the point where you constantly work yours. Like when things happen and you're fully aware that it's the enemy, take a party over that. Amen. There, there were times in my life where I knew the enemy was truly trying to kill me. Amen. Truly trying to kill me. And you know what I had to do? I had to stop and say, you know what, Satan, you're a liar. Now, yes. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't scream in a holler. One time, I was in my house. I was in my garage. It's the house that I'm in now. And uh, I was in my car. I had a BMW then. And uh, uh, the chain from the um, garage just snapped all of a sudden. I mean, even when the guys came to repair, they were like, this never happened. Mr. Smith, you should listen, bro. I wasn't up there hanging. I don't know what happened. Well, I do know what happened, but I knew they probably wouldn't understand it. But, yeah. but it slapped. I mean, it tried. I know the enemy was trying to get at me. There were yeah. other things that were going on in my house. Uh -huh. I said, Satan, you are a liar. I said, the devil is a liar. I said, well, Jesus has given us authority over all the power oh, of the enemy. Wow. Now, now listen, but listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Please listen to me. No, not one time that I ever have to yell. See, see, the greatest power is when you know. It's the knowledge. It's yeah. the information. That's yeah. why he says, in all of you, get and get and understand. Know who you are. I share this, and I think this goes over top of some people say this. You don't see exclamation points in the scripture. Not at all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus was smooth. Yeah. Yes, he, was. Right. he could be on the other side of the shore and say, come out. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and the demons respond. Yes. Yes. Some of you, if not all of us, I think, have that same power. Amen. But because you don't see instant manifestation, you question the power that God has given to Amen. you. Amen. You gotta learn to just walk in who he called you to be. So I'm confident that when I show up, oh that situation, the entire environment has to change. Because the man of God, come on, talk to me somebody. You wanna be that when you come to work, the woman of God has showed up. Now don't don't be professing that you be cussing people out too. Because <laughs> that's the spirit of confusion. Amen. What, now, I don't mind that. What in the name of the Lord? I don't mind stuff like that. But if you got any other stuff you saying? Amen. Amen. You know, it's funny how y'all be all right. Y'all be with me until we say something like that. Like, Come on. You know I'm telling you the truth. So watch what he says here in verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from where? Heaven. 
That's Jesus' way of saying Satan can't handle me. Yes. So last time, matter of fact, matter of fact, Jesus said, last time I checked, Satan was falling. Amen. I had, I had hit him so hard he was going down for the count. I just had the angels take the picture before he hit the ground. That's that's what Jesus is saying. Okay. Now watch this, verse nineteen. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon and and over. Some. A few things. Everybody know the power that we had, right? He gave it to seven. How many disciples were there? Okay, so he couldn't have just been talking to them. He gave it to seven. I submit to you that his church grew, continued to grow. Just think about this. God ain't the type of God who'd be like, I'm going to give you power, but you ain't going to have no power. I'm going to give you power, but you ain't got no, no. All of us in here have power. Amen. 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 And don't get mad at somebody else in terms of the ability to demonstrate. Every man has been given that measure of faith. Amen. Each of us in there have it, and we can walk in it. We can operate in it. Amen. 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 What, 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 and what I'm telling you, nobody taught me I had the power. I had to read the book and believe it. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 Good. 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 Same thing for you. I'm a child of the king. Watch this. As believers, as Christians, and I'm talking about you've given your life to Christ, you have that same power. Amen. 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 You can't be afraid to check somebody. That's true. Somebody. Why, why is it every word come out your mouth is a cuss word? I choose to believe. You're intelligent enough to articulate without using profanity. Like, you know what you write? I'm sorry, man. It's like, we cool. The rest of it, leave the Holy Spirit up to you. Don't keep coming back. You got something again? Did you get the lyric? <laughs> Amen. Amen. So watch this. He says, uh, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means what? <laughs> Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not. That the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written where? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So let me tell you, Anna, when that happened. Prior to you being born, all of our names are written in the book of life. Cameron, you have to do something in order for your name to be taken out. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. And when I say that, let me be very bold and plant That's my feet. Right. When I say that, uh -huh. he ain't talk, just talking about you making a mistake. No, 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 no. When you read, especially in the New Testament, and you see where God is going to bring about punishment of some sort, yes. usually people, if they haven't already hit the reprobate mind stage, uh -huh. people are making a conscious decision not to follow or choose God. Amen. Then your name is being taken out of the book of life. Okay? And I'll be here. i got to make a run, but I'm going to come back for anybody that wants to talk more about the word, find any scripture for you. I probably can break it down for you to help you understand that God is not in the business of just killing his people. Amen. Watch what he said. He said, it's not my will that any man should be lost. Now, for some people, you might say, well, if the will of God is the will of God is going to always happen. Let me tell you something. The will of God is not always Word is. It's not automatic. Amen. Amen. Here's what I mean when I say the will of God is not automatic. It's his will that everybody be saved. Amen. But everybody's not going to be saved because everybody doesn't want to be saved. Or they're not willing to do what it takes in order to be saved. Amen. <laughs> he wants everybody saved. He wants you to choose him. Everybody got that. Yeah. So you, church, Sister April, all of us have power that God has given to us, yeah. and it is power over Alexis, the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. You know how people lie sometimes say the devil made me do it? Yeah. All Satan did was suggest it. Mm -hmm. You went along with it. Yeah. And how many of y'all like some of his suggestions? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I see if you just let the mint mama get, don't it? You know it's not right, but it sounds good, right? Are y'all with me? Amen. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 3. How many of you are glad your names are written in the book of life? Amen. I feel somebody rushing me in my spirit. Don't rush me. You know why you shouldn't rush me? 
Because see, if you just sit around and we're out of service, you're just going to be thinking about what you want to eat. You want me to keep plowing. You want me to keep plowing. Y'all ready? I promise you, I'm going to get you out of here, though. Because y'all will push me right off a cliff. And I'm not going today. Philippians, you ready? Chapter 4, verse 3. Look at what Paul is saying here to the Philippian church. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other uh, my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of what? Life. So these brothers are talking about the, the book of life because it exists. Yeah. Everybody with me? Yeah. It does exist. How many of you want your name to be in the book of life? Amen. Amen. I got news for you. It's already there. Let's go bless the thank God. Amen. It's already there. Now, real quick, Lord, this is so good. Revelation chapter 20, let's go there. Oh, I think I can work my way back. Revelation 20, you ready? Yeah. Let's see here. Revelation 20, we'll start at verse 11. Revelation 20, let's look at verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. Everybody with me? Amen. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Good, good, oh, that's good. Yes, sir. That's talking about God. Yes, sir. That's a man, somebody, anytime the earth is like, I can't look at him. Yes. And there was found no place for them. <clears throat> Goodness. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written into the, in the books, wow. according to their work. 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 Oh, so I said last night, I hope nobody gets offended because I kind of heard this as soon as I said it. Best way for me to explain it is there's a black book and there's a white book. I'm going to have some fun with this rock. I'm going to switch up from last night. The black book is the book of life. Amen. Yeah. Some of y'all catch that. The white book is the book of death. Y'all don't want to have church today. I can tell that many of us have been brainwashed. Amen. Amen. How many of you know and thank God that your name is in the book of life? Amen. 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 allow anybody to cause you to think that you don't have to do anything. When I say that, people often say, well, Jesus did it all. Well, if he did, why are you going to be judged according to your works? Because what he doesn't want is for you to go to the corner store and steal some stuff. Uh, go run around talking about Jesus paid off. Well, a couple things will happen to you. First, the paddy wagon's coming. Amen. Amen. I ain't got to go no further than that. Uh, understand, God expects for us to watch this now. When he looks at us, he wants his, char his godly character and conduct to be dis displayed. Amen. If he doesn't see that, God is concerned. Amen. So there are books that God has. We forget that he's an accountant. And guess what? He got the black book. He got the white book. He's got two books. Yes. But some of y'all go out and be like, my pastor said that the one, one is black. But it's two books. Yes. Have some fun with it. It's two books. Yes. One, watch this now. You want your name to be in the book of life. Yes. yes. Now, I definitely want you today, which is what, why we're here, to make sure that you're taking some personal inventory. Do not sit in New Bethel House of Prayer under this leadership and refuse to examine yourself. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Take a look at yourself, Amen. search yourself and find out whether or not there's some things you need to get off of your chest. Now when I say that, unfinished business spiritually. Yes. Amen. Like yes. Alexis, you know what, you probably don't even remember this, but you came one time with um, Savannah and um, you just asked me for a fan. And I was like, do I look like I'm an usher? <laughs> and I knew that that was the wrong thing to say. Would you please forgive me? 
Uh, by the way, that was an example, because some of them like me. <laughs> Did I ever do that, Alexis? Thank you. Is that what just happened? Thank you, Mama Gail. She's like, okay. no, she's like, that don't sound like you either. Somebody else is like, yes, it's a, yeah. Uh, Rocky, come in from that, please. I don't bash the person. I, um, I, I cussed you out two weeks ago. You're not supposed That's to be late, but this is serious. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, let's talk about that. Yeah, I loaned you a lot of money. And you keep saying you're going to pay me back. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to tell you, this is real stuff yes, in the church. Amen. Would, you, would you please forgive me? Okay. Think, well, you going to give my money? <laughs> you have to clear that up. Come on, Bishop. Make it clear. Yeah. Yes, sir. Come on, Bishop. All right. Now, one, little more, one more demonstration. Am I helping anybody? Yeah. Now, 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 watch in both of those instances, all I did was I went to that individual. Yeah, that's right. Because what the word actually says is, if you think that there is an awe or something that took place between you or your brother and sister, you go. Don't come up to the off and play shot and kind of talk, no. Matter of fact, what he wants you to do is, watch this. This is the offering plate. This is your offering. Put your offering here. Sister Diane, would you forgive me if she says yes, no problem. Now I can go back and get my offering that I left here. Yeah. See, because some of you will go right out the door, but like Sister Diane, you forgive me. <laughs> Come back, take that offering, now you can give it to the Lord. Because the Lord is saying, watch this now, he's concerned, he's sensitive about how you give it to him. That's why the Bible says, that above all things, what the Lord loves, he loves a cheerful giver. So he wants your spirit and your attitude to be right. Okay, everybody got that? See, because watch this, and the reason why you want to be sensitive to that is, if you plant a nasty seed, you're going to get a nasty harvest. It's surprising how many people be talking about, Bishop, how come people mad at me? How come somebody always talking about it? And, and they don't want me, Mom, to ask this question. Did you talk about it about it? Say that, Bishop. Amen. I was talking to one of my brothers this week. I was laughing. I was like, it's funny how people want to plant apple seeds and be believing God for oranges. It don't work like that. <laughs> And you can shout all you want to if you planted apple seeds. You can shout all over the soil. You can put the richest manure down there. When you see growth come up, it's going to be after the kind of seed that you put in the ground. So that's why the Lord is like, hold on, hold on, before you give anything. Get it right. See, because, ooh, Lord, this is good. If you've given a grievous or a jealous or a murderous or a hateful type of offering, because, see, he's a man of his word. If he says, given it shall be given unto you, you got to think about how you gave and what you gave. I don't, know, I don't know about you, but I don't need no jealousy stuff pressed down and shaking yes, together sir. in my life. Hallelujah. Right. This day is important. Because he reminds him, Mike, you need to examine yourself. And then I also need to be prepared for the fact that what if somebody comes to me, watch this now, because all the examples I gave was me coming to you. But what happens when you come to me to tell me something that I did? Amen. Come on, church, my spirit has to be right. Yes. Oh, my God. I said, man, I'm so sorry with you. Bishop, I didn't know that. She's like, Bishop, I knew you was talking. And sometimes people do it like this. Bishop, I knew you was talking about when you was preaching. I didn't appreciate that. You could just go pull me to the side. <laughs> And you know, like preachers, let me come on with the preachers, because know, because you know I got a scripture that'll nail them to the cross. And God be like, nope, don't do it. That's right. Come on, Mrs. Savannah. This is how God wants to receive you. Yes. Now she done read me her rights. Yeah. My rights. Come on up. All he wants me to do is be honest with yeah. Amen. Just brothers, he don't want you to hold on too tight. Just be brother, let him as you stay around too long, another offense will take place. Y'all ain't talking. Elder, listen, and if you got that type of wife, God bless you. Hey, real talk. You know, because I don't process like that, but Minister Johnny, my, my action, he don't play that type of stuff. I, I, he, you know, he's like, Bishop, I appreciate that you shake my wife's hand. I'm, listen, that's your wife. Amen. 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 Bill Johnson, same thing. I, I, I respect that. Once the brothers let me know how they roll, cool. I tease Mike sometimes. Talking about how pretty Nick is, whatnot. Mike always says that glaze look like I will shoot you. <laughs> I'm cool with it. 
<laughs> you know something, I got to move on. And you know he crazy, because Elder don't have no problem. Evangelists will be officiating. I mean, we all spiritual. Like, That's not why! <laughs> Serious too. Verse 13, you ready? We're not done yet. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Congregation, might I share with you? God bless you, minister. Might I share with you? There's no place you can go where God can't find you. As an example, people who were blown up either in the spaceship or unfortunately on September 11th experienced what they did. Let me tell you something. When God calls for you, Every fiber of your being is going to come yeah, together and yeah, stand yeah, before the Lord on yeah, the day of judgment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people sometimes want to debate whether or not it's good for you to get cremated or not. It doesn't matter. Yeah, man. Yeah. I personally don't want to be burned, period, even though yeah. I'm not in that suit yeah. at that point in time. But um, let me tell you something. When God calls for you, oh, you coming together. Brother yeah, yeah. <laughs> Smith, you are quite crisp, but you're going to be judged. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Jesus, death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. God even has control over death and hell. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found in the book of life, the black book, was cast into the lake of fire. Mm. Isn't that something for us to think about? Amen. We thank God on today. Amen. 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 Go with me to John chapter 1. It's 2 o'clock. If anybody has to leave, please do that. Today's an unusual day. The devil Sabbath for us, and I'm not necessarily rushing. Amen. I want to show you how, how much God loves us and that he will share his heart with us. Before I read this verse, I want to say this. I want you to understand that God is never surprised. Amen. He always knew from the beginning of the world, from the foundation of the world, what he was going to do, Sister Sharon. Watch what he says to you, Shemekha. Now, he's the, this is John talking. But once John sees Jesus, Jesus has not been crucified yet. Amen. He has not been killed yet, if you will. He's not been beaten. None of those things have happened to him. But as soon as John sees Jesus, look at verse 29. <coughs> Excuse me. He says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. It was already pre-planned. -pre Amen. It was already foreordained that Jesus Christ would be the one selected to take sin away from the world. Amen. I choose to believe this church. Today you don't have to wonder if your sins are forgiven or not. We know through Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven. Yes, I got another one for you. If I'm going to go from memory, go with me to First John chapter five. First John chapter five. First John chapter five. You ready? And I want you to walk away with this hope uh, or assurance. This is the word of God. You don't have to guess. You don't have to wonder. I am grateful for this ministry that God has given to Pastor Smith here Amen. because we take the time and explain the word to you. Amen. And that's Amen. the greatest thing I can ever give to you Amen. because in moments and times where the de devil, excuse me, plants seeds in your mouth or a mind or attempts to do that, you have the word of God Amen. because we've taken the time to talk to you about what the word is actually saying to you. So you don't have to choose to believe the nonsense. Are you with me? Amen. First John chapter 5. <clears throat> And in particular, verse 12. These things have I written unto you that, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. What do you have? Eternal life. So if you have eternal life, where's your name? Eternal life. 
Right. See, because <laughs> come on, Mama, that's what I'm talking about. Because watch this now. It's only one or two things you're going to have. You are, everybody's going to live forever. You're going to either live with eternal life or eternal death is what I want to call it. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. But watch this now. You can't have eternal life if your name ain't written yeah. in the book of life. So once again, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his, he heareth us. Oh, that's good. That, that word will is powerful. Amen. Because it's his will that all mankind be saved. Yes. <laughs> Just make sure it's your will that you be saved. Amen. Ooh, I love that, yes. And if we, verse 15, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. So do you know your sins are forgiven? Yes, sir. Do you know we have an advocate with the Father? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. 213. We normally have church till 2.30. I don't want to cheat you today. Amen. Let's go. Y'all ready? Amen. We're going along today. If I'm the quarterback and I'm throwing the ball to the wide receiver, what do I need you to do? I need you to catch it too. Y'all ready? Everybody know. Go to Leviticus 23. This is good. I shared last night for those of us that were here that I get actually get strength when I fast. Amen. So you don't have to feel sorry or anything. Keep praying for him, but I get strength when I fast. That's, and that's not thrown out there because you feel like you got demon because you get weak. <laughs> Sometimes we don't fix it up. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we're like, why are we just saying? I, I, I mean, no harm. That's just me. That's just me. Right. Thank you, Elder. He was like, what's wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with you. We just made differently. That's all. Anybody with me? Amen. Let's look at verse 26. I got to share this. I believe I did what God wanted me to do. Help you understand what's in the word. Um, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse 26, Also the tenth day of the seventh month there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Um, and ye shall do no work in that same day. Can I stop there for a moment? Amen. Okay, so here's a distinction that's being made in the word of God in love. Your normal seventh-day Sabbath, we started off there, he says no work should be done. Everybody got that? Yes, then, now watch this. If you pay attention to Passover and some of the other feasts of the Lord, uh, let's see, other one, Pentecost and there are others that are there, the trumpets and whatnot, he says save that for which every man must eat. So you can cook on those days. Amen. That's a good place to thank the Lord. Amen. So, this day happened to fall on a regular seven-day Sabbath, but if it fell on a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, whatever, he would want you not to work. Everybody got that? Here's what I highly stress, and I take full authority by being senior pastor of this church. There are a lot of things in the Word of God. I think you see some liberty, and you probably can play around with in terms of days. One day I don't play with and I don't stress that you play around with either, it's the Day of Atonement. Amen. Amen. When you look at Leviticus chapter 16, and I'm not going to read it to you, I promise you, in its entirety, that is for the priests to do. Amen. What I don't often talk to you about is, back then, Elder, uh, just look at Elder Harris as my backup. So if I'm the number one high priest, and he's the number two high priest, here's what will happen on that particular day, because we don't really talk about this, but I guarantee you this happened because we're human. Yeah. So if I'm the high priest, God has already told me, Michael, number one, what you don't know is I wash and change my clothes five times throughout yes. that day. Yes. Everybody got that? Yes. It's extremely strenuous. There's even a way that they would put the blood on their fingers yes. to make sure that they carried out the orders that God had given to them specifically to do. Then there was a curtain that would allow them to be able to see my movements but not necessarily see my body. When I say that, you couldn't see my nakedness but you would be a silhouette, if you will. They would do that to make sure that the, the priest never deviated from what God told him to do. Amen. Now, just in case I wasn't right, right with God, thank you, Nick D. We got my back up. Damn, a deuce. I like that. Watch this now. 
nobody ever talks about if number one, Ace and Deuce both failed to meet the qualifications. All we like to talk about is, yeah, there's a rope down around, it's very true. We call it a rope, but not. My studies have shown me a couple of things differently, but it's essentially the same. But guess what? If he wasn't right and I wasn't right, we, we got killed right there, they pull us out. Right. What happens if there's nobody qualified to go in? And they had to live like that. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but there's some things that happen. Have you ever committed a sin or done something and it was heavy on your heart? Yes. Just imagine God saying, your punishment is for you to carry it a little longer. Wow. I don't know about you, but it breaks my heart when I know somebody's, uh, I, I, we're at odds with someone. I'm at odds with someone. I want to get to them. I need to get that off of me. I don't want to die like that. I don't want to live like that. Amen. God doesn't want me to live like that. He says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Get, get to that person and get it right. But just imagine having to go a whole other year because we don't have nobody qualified. Because let me tell you something. The time to figure out whether or not you qualified is not like, all right, I'm going to check y'all. If I don't come back, Smitty ain't playing with his life like that. Y'all might be like, let me see if I can go up there. I'm this, this. You wash him, you change your clothes, and before you do anything, you need to confess sin over a bull for your sin. Even that within itself tells me something, because I think it was a goat for everybody else, but it's a bull. For the high priest. I said, what did he do? You know, Newsy P. I said, what did he do? <laughs> so let's say I'm the number one and I, and I wasn't where I, where I was supposed to be. I got killed or I didn't go up. Now Elder Harris goes. He's got, I mean, that's some, that's some weight. God really wants us to respect him to the same degree today. Amen. Amen. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute, man, wait a minute. Even though at my house, I can play certain types of games. When I come here, I'm kind of scared. Yeah. I mean, for anybody that gets that microphone, Amen. I want you to understand, it's just not something that you just do casually. Amen. 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 I, mean, I take that office very seriously that I'm yes. standing there talking to God's people yes. in God's house. Yes. Yes. That's not a time for me to embellish my story and start lying yes. so you laugh. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to help you. Even stuff as simple as the announcements, even yes. though we have fun, you God has entrusted you to feed his people information. That's not something we play with. It used to be when I was growing up, they wouldn't let you up here in the washroom. Uh -huh. yeah. I see us now, we just walk across yeah. it like, oh, I'm not going to go back You should thank God you didn't grow up in my past. Yeah. You repeat on yourself in church. Yeah. <laughs> and then they'd have made you lay there while they cast the demon out. Because you had to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Wow. You know what? While I judged them back then, I now understand why they uh, operated yeah, the way that they did. Right. Yeah. Because there's a lot of us, as soon as some type of license is given, yeah. you take the whole... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I recognize that today as a young pastor. If I could tell any pastors anything, I would say every tradition that we've been given, all of them are not bad. Not I had to learn some things through experience, and I'm grateful for every experience. But yeah. then there are some people, man, you give them an inch, they take them out. Like we tell you, you know what? Getting back to the Sabbath again. You know, God's real desire is for you to make preparations so you don't have to cook on the Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah. But in the event, you know, you're hungry or somebody needs to eat, it's medical reason, yeah. whatnot, it's, you have provision, yeah. I think, you know, by God, to do yeah. what you need to do. You know, some of us have been doing, we go out and have a full fledged barbecue. Mm. Yeah. It's nothing but the grace of God that we didn't choke on a hot dog. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. I mean, why? Is it that difficult to do what God said to do? No, it's not. And please don't compare us with anybody else that's doing anything differently. I got a different message for that. Amen. Because if God didn't tell you to do it in the first place, then you can do whatever you want to do. That's right. That's right. He tells us here, he says, Mike, this day is important. Verse 28, and ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord God. But who's making the atonement? Jesus is. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Why do you think he says that? And he says it twice. It's pretty serious. Yeah, it's pretty serious. But here's the thing. Can I tell you this? You already know this. The wages of sin is death. So what God does is, you know, what's beautiful about him is he'll let you keep hanging yourself. 
and keep hanging yourself. And then before you know it, you're truly dangling from a tree. Don't let that happen. Make sure we stay in position where we can continuously be used by God. Amen. 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 What verse I stopped at? 20 odd. Let's go to 30. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from where? All right. Ye shall do no manner of work. Ye shall do no what? Ye shall do no what? Make sure we get some more people gathered there. I need some more voices. You shall do know what? Forever. All right. It shall be a statue for how long? Forever. How long? Forever. How long is forever? Forever. All right. Throughout your generations and all your generations, right? And all your dwellings, rather. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of what? Rest. Now, the only thing I want you to do is to afflict your souls. Amen. We interpret afflict to mean no eating and no drinking. You're supposed to fast. Are you with me? Amen. Anybody got that? Somebody say good word. Good word. Now, can you imagine if you were the one chosen to preach for about two hours on this day? <laughs> now, what I do want to address before I close today is how should we be fasting? I think everybody's doing well today. Amen. I don't see anybody slouched over, acting like it's the end of the world, acting like you're going to die. Amen. Somebody like, how you doing fasting? <laughs> oh, damn. Matter of fact, according to Leviticus, we suppose, this is a Sabbath type that we ought to be rejoicing. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Alexis, I'm going to give them some more scriptures so they see I didn't make this up. Y'all ready? Yeah. Go be to Matthew. Okay, Matthew chapter 5, minute, uh -oh. Matthew chapter 5, there. Yes. Thank you. Matthew 6. Thank you, sir. Yes, that's it. Y'all ready? Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. Let's do this. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as a hypocrite, as uh, the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Girl, I say unto you, they have their what? But thou, when thou prayest, enter to thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father will see it in secret, shall reward thee openly. Everybody got that? Let's move on. Verse 7, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard uh, for their much speaking. Um, what is the one about fasting? Did I miss it? Is it that far down? Yes. Thank you very much. Let's jump over to 16. You ready? Amen. Moreover, I thought I, everybody at verse 16? Yes. 16, yes. everybody ready? Amen. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. You know, these are people that want to appear holier than thou. Amen. Don't go for it. How you doing, brother? I'm fast. <laughs> They, they might as well eat. They really might as well eat. So they disfigure their faces and they may appear unto men to fast. He says, Verily I say unto you, they have their reward, but thou wilt not fast. Now watch what he says. Anoint thine head and wash thy face. I want to explain it this way. Take time to pray. And I do believe, I pray for each of you. And I ask the Lord to help us to have an easy fast, a quick fast, fast, excuse me, a healthy fast. So he says here, don't disfigure your face and all kind of stuff. You do that, you have your reward. Now watch this, but when thou fastest, he says, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou not appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now, New Bethel, this is a new challenge for us. You know what God really wants? And I'm hoping we can do this by next year. I really believe God wants us to be able to come in on Day of Atonement, that we consecrate, and nobody have to make an announcement about the fact that we're fasting. Amen. 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 We just come in and do what we do, and call it a day. Because watch this, ultimately what God wants is for him to get the glory, not Amen. us. Amen. Everybody got that? Amen. He wants to be able to get the glory, which means... There ought not be an announcement. I'm doing this inwardly as I'm, as I'm to my Lord and Savior. And watch this also. The expectation is that he's not asking me to do something that's going to alter my entire lifestyle. Amen. Or my life, if you will. Amen. Amen. Now, let's end up on what I think is rather a high note without me screaming and hollering. Go with me to Isaiah 58 chapter. Isaiah 
I know God wants me saved. Amen. And I know God wants you saved. Because otherwise, he wouldn't tell anybody to cry out and spare not. He's saying, say something, because he doesn't want you to be lost in that state. Amen. I'm talking about, you know, the unholy state, the sinful state. Y'all ready? So he says here, now most of us who are born in the house of God probably know this by heart. And I'm going to take a few moments just to read it, and we'll be done. He says, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like what? And show my people their what? And the house of Jacob their what? And let's stop there. Please don't be offended by that. God only does that because he loves us. Are you with me? So if there are any shortcomings, let me tell you something. God desires for us to know. Even down to, may I say this in love, even down to even pastor. There's several of you who God, I believe, will allow to share things. If something bothers you, you have come to your pastor. Uh, with respect, with love, and say, you know, Bishop, I don't understand such and such, such. You know, I saw you do such and such. You know, can you explain that? There are a few ways that I take that. I choose to take that in love. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 You, you got to know God sent you to do that, though. That's right. Because I might send you back with about 12 scriptures. <laughs> Watch this now. He says, yet they seek me daily and delight to, delight to know my ways. And I really believe that this is indicative of how many people seek God. They really do want God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't know how to go about going after him. Yeah, amen. But you, you seek the Lord. You really yeah. want to know, right? Yeah. He says, as we move on verse 2, as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of God. He said, they ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. And I think a lot of people really love the Lord like that. Amen. Now watch this. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. But watch this. Verse 4. Behold, he says, here's the problem, and the hypocrisy, if you will. He says, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. He says, ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. So if you're going fast, don't fast that way. Amen. I'm a fast that God will slap this person or their teeth fall out their mouth and they get wrong, wrong reason to fast. Are you with me? He moves on a little bit further. Let me read verse 4 again. He says, Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to spite the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do to make your voice to be heard on high. He says, Is it such a fast that I have chosen? Now watch this. He's asking a question. Because he had, there is a fast that he's chosen. It's just not this type. But there is a type of fast that he's chosen. We happen to be doing it on today. And I want you to know that there's some powerful benefits to fasting. Today. Move on, um, verse 5 again. A day for man to afflict his soul. Is it to bow down his head as, uh, as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes unto him? Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Or verse 6, is not this the fast that I've chosen? And watch this. The type of fast that God has chosen is to loose the bands of wickedness, to let the oppressed go free, and to break what? Y'all didn't get as excited on that. It's a question, but he's really stating, making some powerful statements in there as well, too. To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. He says, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou, cast, uh, that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Isn't it funny how... And Minister Carr, the Lord used him again this morning to share this with us. Isn't it funny how when we do things for the Lord, somebody else always gets blessed? Amen. Amen. See, because he's saying, in, this, in essence, while you may be free, well, you might have a loved one or a co-worker or a neighbor who's not free, so why not fast and be praying for yes. them that Amen. God would loose the bands yes. of wickedness, Amen. that he would let the oppressed go free, yes. and that he would break every yoke. I mean, come on, with love and compassion, do you know some people that just seem like they've been crazy all their life? Yes. Yes. Can I submit to you that sometimes they don't know how to become sane? Amen. Amen. And sometimes God has positioned us to make sure we're the ones to be, do, be doing Nicole, the interceding for them. Amen. I even found myself, the Holy Spirit convicted me by saying, stop saying that. Why don't you pray for them? Stop Amen. saying that. Why don't you yes. fast for them? Yes. Yes. Amen. Anybody can identify the problem. Right. How many of us are willing to do what it takes in order to get it fixed? Yes. 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 I've been fasting for 17 years. We'll keep fasting. Yes. Yes. They, 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 might, they might have 18-year deliverance. Get going, yes. give it another year. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Now watch this. We skipped over. We read it, but I, I, don't, I think I should take some time to talk about this too. Y'all good? Amen. Look at this. He says in verse 7, because we always focus on verse 6 and we want to shout and we want to do victory laps, but we don't want to talk about 7. Watch what he says in verse 7. Is, not, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Amen. We have a ministry within the church uh, in um, Cincinnati. I love this. On Day of Atonement, they go and they either go to a shelter and serve people or something like that. Because what God desires is for us and how we can start planning to do this and make the feast more festive. How about we go feed people who are less fortunate than us? Amen. Amen. Don't get spiritual on it because somebody, we're not supposed to work. Well, guess what? This is serving. This is spiritual work. This is God's work. Are you with me? Funny, you be, be careful, minister, because the saints get real spiritual when they're lazy. Yeah. <laughs> Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring, watch this, the poor? Now, this one gets me because I don't like bringing people over my house. Amen. Amen. It says, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. I hear you, Sister Williams. When thou seest the naked, that thou what? Come Lord. Come Everybody see this? Yeah, mm -hmm. And he says, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. These are all questions. And if God is asking you a question, he trust me, he already knows the answer. Amen. What do we call that? Rhetorical? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us who have family members that are a problem. Yes. When was the last time you blessed them with something? Sometimes you need to set the stage before you minister to people. Yeah. 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 Sometimes, no matter how long, you know, it's been a long period of time since y'all haven't had a relationship, yeah. it's going to take a while. Amen. Amen. If you just keep planting the seed, keep being nice, and eventually yeah. they're going to open up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it won't be overnight. Are you with me? <laughs> then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Um, let me say this here. For some of us, we're going through things because we probably fast and we pray. But we need to check our hearts. That's right. What I see in the text too is a self-righteous spirit. Do you think you're doing anything like God owes you something? God doesn't owe you anything. No. I'll share this to the glory of God. One of the apostles shared with my father before he passed. And I'm grateful he shared it with him because I see it in the word of God. But many of us don't want to have the difficult conversations. I'm anointed to do it. No. Apostle Rackman told my dad, he said, when he was battling cancer, he said, Smith, he said, make sure you don't have any unforgiveness in your heart. That's right. Sometimes we're sick because we got pride in us. Yeah. Sometimes we're sick because our ego is the most important thing in our yeah. lives. Yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. God wants us to check ourselves. Yeah. 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 You know what I see there in Isaiah 58? Some of the same stuff. Yes. That you fast and you pray for somebody else, but it's your heart that's, right. that's still messed up. Yeah. So you forget where God brought you from. And so when you have a conversation with somebody else who's struggling, there is no love. There is no compassion. <clears throat> I'm telling the truth. Amen. He says, but if you do these things, he says, then, verse 8, shall thy life bring forth this morning, and thy health shall spring forth what? Now let me park right there again. I keep getting stuck in that verse. But sometimes we look for God to do things, and we get mad if he didn't do it immediately. I would venture that you would, I, I, let me share it this way. You want to check yourself before you start blaming God. Amen. Amen. Ask him to show you you, because he'll do it. Yeah. Every time I pray and ask him that, he don't take his yeah. time. I, I, that time's like, wish he wish he'd delay it, but he is like a me. Yes. Yes. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. What happened? Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall for those of you who felt like your prayers are being delayed, let's take a look at this text. Because he says, after you take care of what's in verses 7, 8, and 9, well, look what happens in 9. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer, and thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. That's all it took for me to get his attention? Amen. I got some naked people that need to be clothed. I'm going to go find them. I got some hungry people that need food. I'm going to go find them. Amen. I got some poor people God wants me to be a blessing to because he says, After that, then. Shut thy call, and guess what? I'll answer. Yes. Yeah. Everybody got that? He's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody got that? Yeah. You got some homework. Yeah. Wow. 
If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke and the putting forth of the finger, good, good mother. Come on, church. Why come? You know, we. Okay, I'm sorry. Did I tell y'all that I memorized the menu? No. I'm getting ready to give it a run now. Because <laughs> it's going to wake you up. I had to prepare. I had to prepare because some of y'all, y'all struggle. Everybody awake? Amen. Yeah. It's going to get real difficult because I have to be very creative when I need to be. And I'm going to start off with appetizers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got your attention now. Everybody with me? Look, y'all, what did he tell us to do? Number one, we're putting yokes on people. Number two, we're pointing fingers at people and speaking vanity. That's what he said. Now, we're moving forward. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. Wow. Amen, amen. And the Lord shall guide thee con and satisfy thy soul in and make fat thy... And thou shalt be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Good, 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 good. Amen. All of that from a fast. And there's more, but all of that from a fast. So don't let anybody talk you out of whether or not you should flip your soul. Oh, yeah, it's tremendous benefit. So, in, in essence, what God is saying is, well, I've already forgiven your sins. I need for you to be fasting for somebody else who may not have entered into the ark of safety as of yet. Amen. That's the type of function or activity he wants on this type of day which he's called for fast. Are you with me? Amen. So if you got some unsaved loved ones, we have prayer. Yeah. It's a good time to call their name out. Yeah. Yeah. If you know, you know, this is a good day too. If you find somebody who really does need some food or need some clothes, it's, yeah. it's a good day to be a blessing to them. Yeah. Amen. 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 Share Christ. And you know what? God wants, he don't want you to tell the person, I'm only doing this because I'm fasting. No. <laughs> He wants you to just do it. What he wants you wants to do, wants it to, wants to happen, is for it to become a part of your life. Amen, amen. Well, that's a concern for you, not just today, but every day. Amen. 